Okay, so when you guys look at your graphic organizer, now that you've gone through those cards and you're recording the facts, a couple things that I want to point out, okay? Above your primary nomination season, I want you to write the word delegate. You're writing the word delegate. Okay. Above general election or campaign season, I want you to write the word electors. The reason I've written those there is because fundamentally that is the goal of this process. Basically all of those candidates out there right now, they are chasing what are called delegates. And I'm going to get there and I'm going to explain what it is, but just understand that that's the primary objective. When you get to the very end, which should be the national convention, that national convention, you want to have the magic number of delegates so that you can then go over here and compete in the general election. In the general election, Technically, we're chasing electors because the Electoral College is what's going to determine whether or not we're going to be elected president. We're chasing the votes of the people, and the votes of the people will translate into electors, but because it's not a popular vote and because of the Electoral College, it becomes kind of a wonky strategy a little bit. Down at the bottom, let's look at your timeline, okay? So our next election we said would be in November 2016, right? Okay, so let's kind of think about where we are. We are somewhere over here, right? We said what month did we said it was uh, September. Okay, so almost so we're like somewhere over here. So technically, we're already in this process, right? Yeah. No. Listen, I'm I know what I'm talking about. I promise, I'm not wrong this time. Okay. All right. So this was 2015. Wait, I am wrong. What What is it? Oh wait, six. No, 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 no. I'm right. This is January 2016. This is November 2016. This is 2017 over here. Okay. All right. So if you think we're in the months preceding, we're somewhere between February 2016, 15. Oh Don't do that to me. Okay, between February 2015 and January 2016, right? Okay. So our last election, when would the midterm election have been? 2014. November of 2014 was our last election. Literally the day after that, someone can file with the Federal Election Commission and say, I want to be president. Now rarely does the person who files for president ultimately end up getting elected or running, but we do have people that file really, really early. So right now, we're in this process, like leading up to getting right. What is it that we're doing? Let's, it's the states up to the primary, so we're having debates. And what's the purpose of the debates, Alexa? Alexis. So like, see where the, sorry. Okay, so the candidates are out there presenting their different viewpoints. Why are they doing that? They're trying to gain some kind of support. They're trying to prove that they have national appeal. So Ted Cruz is out there as our senator saying, like, I can play on the national stage. I'm not just popular in Texas. Look, here's all the reasons you should vote for me. What does he need to build, to build that national appeal besides us just liking him? Say, have, say a little bit louder. What? Maybe like the, trying to go to other states. Okay. For sure. He's going to go to other states and talk to them. What did you say, Roberto? Okay, he needs some kind of experience, definitely. But if he, if a person is going to make this for the long haul, you guys, and they're going to campaign all of this time up to this magic day, what do you think they need? Money. Money. Okay. So right now, yes, they're out there campaigning and they're trying to build their name, but every time that translates into money. That's probably the number one goal. Can I build national appeal? But can people, will people keep giving me money so that I can stay in there? and that I can run this national campaign in this massive country of ours. Okay? All right. So we're going to go here then, and we're going to start focusing specifically here on this primary stage. Center. Before we can talk specifically about how this process works now, I think that you guys need to have um, kind of like a better understanding of how things used to be because the way we elect our president is super different and I think some of the things I'm going to tell you are going to surprise a lot of you because this this process changed dramatically post-1968, okay? So um, 
Victor, tell me, what were some things that were going on in our country in 1968? Just describe that time period for me. Uh, Go way, way, way more forward than that. Everybody, just shout it out. What's going on in 1968? We've got the Civil Rights Movement, kind of massive change. What else? Vietnam, incredibly unpopular televised war. Okay, all kinds of student protests and revolution. We've had a president be assassinated in the last couple of years. We've had a major civil rights leader be assassinated. Sean, what are you going to say? Watergate. Watergate's coming, right? You guys, people don't feel good about Washington, D.C. in 1968. There is a very anti-government, a very, like, individualized, we're going to push back against the government kind of feeling, okay? All right, so then you fast forward, and let's look specifically at what's going at the Democratic National Convention. It's going to be held in Chicago, okay? Remember, each party, each party is having its own convention. And at that convention, we're going to do two things. We're going to write a party platform, and we're going to choose a presidential candidate for the election for, like, the next election, okay? All right. For Democrats, the Chicago Convention of 1968 was a nightmare. Meeting after the assassinations of Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy, Democrats fell into chaos, fighting Chicago police and each other. With George McGovern as president of the United States, we wouldn't have to have Gestapo's tactics in the streets of Chicago. Mr. Daly is not pleased with Senator Rivera. How hard it is, hard it is to accept the truth. Vice President Hubert Humphrey, hobbled by the unpopularity of President Johnson and his Vietnam War policies, appealed for order. Surely we have now learned the lesson that violence breeds counter-violence, and it cannot be condoned whatever the source. It didn't work. Humphrey's November defeat ushered in the era of Republican presidential dominance with seven GOP victories in the last ten elections. All right, let's talk about what we just saw. Okay, um, let's see. Kathy, tell me what you think was going on there. What was the problem at that convention? Okay, just describe, well, tell me what you saw that was wrong. Okay, there's definitely a lack of trust to the government. I see that. Okay, Jason, what did you see? Yeah, they, there's definitely a very volatile feeling, okay? The people that were at that convention, that those people are referred to as delegates. Okay, so all of those people at the convention were delegates. Who did they choose to be the Democratic nominee for the presidency? Did you hear what they said in the video? Humphrey. Yeah, be, don't be afraid, you guys. They said they chose Hubert Humphrey. Hubert Humphrey was the vice president at the time. Here's the problem. These people that are outside, that are all gathered around, they didn't vote for Hubert Humphrey. When they were back in their states in Texas and California and Wisconsin, and they were saying as Democrats in those states, this is who we want the party to choose? That's not who they chose. Humphrey wasn't even on the ballot in most of the states, so he wasn't even an option, okay? So what kind of people do you think were delegates at the 1968 National Convention? Say it again. Yes. What does that mean, Braxton? you got to say it. There was a lot of rich people. Back before 1968, you guys, the kind of person that got to go to the convention was a party elite. You might remember in U.S. history, you learned about, like, party bosses, like, boss tweed, cronyism. Is that coming back? Like, that kind of idea? Okay. So it was a time period in our history where you and I had the right to vote, but that vote then was not always translated into what the party would do. So that had always happened before, you know? And I always had this vision of, like, these old white guys and, like, whiskey and cigars and making deals and literally sometimes it would take them like rounds and rounds of balloting before they would finally decide because when the delegates went they would just vote and they would try to make the best decision for the party and what they thought the party would want not necessarily what the voters wanted so prior to 1968 people accepted that it wasn't really a big deal 
but we're not the same kind of people anymore. You know, post-1968, we become very, very different. And so as a result, something called the McGovern Fraser Commission is going to be created. You should recognize this guy, like he was just in the last video clip, right? George McGovern was an anti-war activist, and he was really popular with a lot of like those young people that were protesting at the previous election. And so what the McGovern Fraser Commission is going to say is we're not going to let the fat cats control the party anymore. Okay? We're going to say that if Michelle is a registered Democrat, she can go to the Democratic National Convention as a delegate, which means that she could help decide who the presidential candidate might be. Okay? And Braxton can go, and Pedro can go, and I can go, and anybody can go. And we're going to make this process open and representative. Democratic National Convention, what's going to determine who you vote for for the party? You, we chose you as our delegate. What are you going to do? Yeah, because now we're thinking our mind is shifted. And no longer are we thinking that, oh gosh, the party has to make decisions for the people. We're saying we need to represent the will of the voters because we have had a civil rights movement and we have enfranchised people. And we have said we are not going to allow barriers to voting anymore. So we're going to make sure that the vote's actually real, like it really happens. So George McGovern is going to end up being the Democratic nominee in 1972. So now I'm going to show you how the convention looked different. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. It was almost dawn in Miami when the final moment came. But the lateness of the hour did not feel the emotion in that hall. For the victory they celebrated was not his alone. My nomination is all the more precious in that is the gift of the most open political process in all of our political history. The reforms in work were in Miami that night were people from the entire length and breadth of their party. Some were professionals, many were amateurs, but they all were Democrats, and they all shared that this year, each of them would make a difference. I'm a housewife and a mother and a dairy farmer. I have one son, 17, and he was very anxious to do the driving. And so he offered to take me down, but he also told me if I didn't vote correctly, I'd walk home, and his vote was from the government. Yeah, I've been in politics since 1960, and I think that's a difference between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party to begin with. I think the Democratic Party is a party of the people, the ones who care. And we're only three from the delegation of the Revenue Commission before. We were all new, and we didn't have uh, a moment's free time. And, you know, the first, first night went 10 hours. People feel as if they, there's no way they can influence what happens. And I always felt that way. And in fact, that's the really great thing about me. I went to the National Democratic Convention, you know? A lot of people said, oh, you lost five times by being up all night. Well, that to me was great. And I, every delegate that, that was there stayed there and stayed with them. The state senators and the members of the House of Delegates and all of these new people really worked hard. The everyday person in our section, they were making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and salami sandwiches right there on the convention floor because they didn't have the money to eat in the uh, hotels and restaurants. It, it wasn't a convention to play. The Miami people, the hotel people, and the restaurant people were very unhappy because we we didn't play. We worked hard on the floor and we had freedom of the floor to, to work in the way that we wanted to work. Why are we very able to participate? Because they're participating and the politicians, or he in this case, We'll have to listen to what the people say. He's going to respond to the people.